Who are these pro users Apple is so aggressively trying to interest in their iPads? Filmmakers, writers, photographers, am I enough pro to truly utilize everything the iPad Pro can give me? The baseline M2 MacBook Air is only $11.99 and it's not pro in any way. iPad Pro 12.9 with the magic keyboard is $13.99 and this got me thinking, how pro you need to be to replace a Mac? with an iPad. I've used the iPad Pro as my main computer for an entire week and I've tested every aspect of it. So stick around to find out whether the iPad can be a direct laptop replacement. Let's start with something basic a person could do, carry it around. No, no, we will not turn it on just yet. An iPad with a keyboard weighs a little over three pounds, which is heavier than a MacBook Air. The iPad keyboard combo also is thicker. However, I really like how the iPad is elevated and floats over the keyboard, giving it a more futuristic, more novel feeling. Cold aluminum of the iPad is very pleasant to hold and the soft rubbery material of the Magic Keyboard feels really nice. Aesthetically, an iPad and a keyboard look much more interesting than any MacBook, so if you want to stand out, it can be your call for the purchase. Now let's tackle the system real quick. Apple has made many improvements to the iPad OS over the years, polishing and refining it, animations, interacting with files, apps, everything is top notch. It needs some getting used to time, but I would say that navigating through iPad OS feels just as nice as it is on the Mac. But can you really get some work done? I do YouTube, that's my craft and my passion, so I can access this combo on different levels. Every video starts with the idea. That idea must be researched, finalized and scripted. This stage of production can be overlooked and all this stuff we'll do here is really similar to the stuff an average student will do, so. Okay, subject research. Usually I use YouTube for this and occasionally I browse the web. YouTube, as you may expect, works great. The image quality is amazing, the brightness level is simply mind-blowing. The screens on iPads are as good as they are on Pro MacBooks. Crisp, ultra-bright, P3 white color gamut support, 120Hz, so much better than anything you can get on the MacBook Air, for example. And the best part, I can easily detach the iPad from the keyboard and continue my research on the couch, in the kitchen, outdoors, on the white throne, iPad is just much more versatile, much less restraining. Using it feels fresh, unusually comfortable. Now, as we're done with researching, let's create a script. I will use Google Docs for that, but you can use Pages, Office 365, anything you like, basically. Right off the bat, typing experience is just as great as on my 14-inch MacBook Pro. The keys are the right size, they travel just the right amount, and the backlight is a very nice thing to have. Trackpad is basically basically identical to the one in MacBooks, but much smaller. Gestures are still there, familiar to the ones on Macs, but performing them is tricky. My fingers are not very big, but cramping three or four fingers with a small trackpad doesn't feel natural. At least as natural as it is on Macs. And another thing that is not working is typing with an iPad on your lap. Finding the balance so the iPad won't fall is hard because the point of balance is high up. Of course, that's the limitation of this keyboard design that can be mitigated, but I really can't call this keyboard combo a MacBook replacement in every way. In some ways, sure, but not in every way. If you always type with your laptop on your desk, then your experience will be just as great. Oh, and one more thing, I wish there was a row of function keys because reaching to the control center each time I need to adjust just the brightness or volume isn't all that convenient. The cheaper 10th gen iPad has that, so Apple, maybe it's time to upgrade the Magic Keyboard? Okay, the keyboard is great, but how about the text editing software? Well, here's the catch. If you use Pages, you basically have the full functionality as on Macs, but with Google Docs, you are limited. Interface is simplified, not all editing functions are present, and you need to go through a couple of menus just to check the word count. The same goes to Google Sheets and Apple's numbers. Making small occasional adjustments is doable, but forget about comfortably inserting huge formulas or managing five sheets at once. Some 
coming up, the experience a student or writer can get is passable, but if you need to do something bigger, more advanced, I would choose something more MacBook-ish. So 7 out of 10 replacement for students and basic people. Maybe video calls will crash the iPad? The iPad's front-facing camera has a 12 megapixel resolution and can shoot 4K 60, while MacBooks are limited to heavily processed 1080p or even 720p. Yes, it is located rather weirdly on this side, but if you can cope with this minor inconvenience, you will feel the power of a big sensor, center stage, and 4K videos. iPad for conferences and video calls is just as good, if not better, than a MacBook. So. 10 out of 10. Now let's move on to something more challenging, cameras and ports. Videographers and content creators often need to transfer data from camera to the editing device and then to a hard drive. Can the iPad do that? Since 2018, Pro iPads have been equipped with Type-C ports, and I will connect the camera first. As soon as I plug in the cable, it starts charging. To transfer files, I must turn the camera on. After a few seconds, the iPad finds the camera and shows it on the import tab. Here we see all the files stored on my camera. We can import them and delete them from the camera storage. Okay, the camera is working. How about drones? Again, plug in the cable, turn on the drone, and here we go again. Okay, what's next? Now I will transfer these files to my external drive. Plug it in, wait for it to appear in the menu, and export the files from the iPad. Boom, it took only a few minutes. As a media transferring device, 10 out of 10, definitely recommend. There is one catch though, iPad has only one USB Type-C that supports data transfer. So if you want to charge it and transfer data simultaneously and use an HDMI port, you will need to buy a dongle. Unlike MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, which has a MagSafe charger and two Type-C ports, an iPad Pro needs a dongle, so maybe I should take one point back. 9 out of 10 for media transfers, good but sometimes inconvenient. Oh, and one more thing, if you're using a Sony camera like I am, you probably are using the Sony-made app for using your iPhone, iPad or Mac as an external monitor. If you do that, you know how bad the app is. It freezes, the controls are lagging, the connection is unstable, and the interface is, is a mess. But there is a better app called Monitor Plus. This is not an ad, I didn't get paid for it, I just want to share my findings and possibly help people. Through this app, you can access all the camera's features, adjust focus, white balance, etc. It has zebras, guides, anamorphic distress, and more. But the best part is the low latency. The app from Sony is just horrible in terms of latency. Now let me rephrase that. It is especially horrible in terms of latency. The delay is so big that you can fit an, an entire shooting day in the time between your command and scene changes. Monitor Plus, on the other hand, has a very low latency. It's always funny how enthusiasts can make big brand products much better by adding the passion they have. So iPad as an external monitor for cameras 10 out of 10. Okay, the script is done, the videos are shot and transferred. Next, editing. It is no surprise that there currently is only one app that allows complex editing on an iPad. LumaFusion. This app is not. It's exclusive to iPhones and iPads, you won't find it anywhere else. LumaFusion is very well optimized, so editing complex 4K videos is a walk in the park for the iPad Pro. The app library has countless effects, transitions, sound samples, etc. The app can work with multiple video and audio tracks, text layers, you can color grade your videos, add animations, tune every aspect of them, just like in Pro Apps on Mac. It works with a green screen, supports lots and more. For simple YouTube videos, LumaFusion is perfect. Plus, its optimization makes it faster than some MacBooks when exporting the same project. It is not cheap, the app costs $30, but it's worth every cent. Plus, recently, Apple has announced that DaVinci Resolve is coming to iPad. This is massive for video editors and if the functionality will be the same or at least almost the same then the iPad will really be a laptop replacement. The screen is great for color grading and M chips give enough power even for complex 4K editing. We of course will test DaVinci Resolve when it comes out so if you want to see a video about it smash that like button. So 
iPad as a video editing station, eight out of 10. Okay, the last thing left to do is create a thumbnail. For that, I will use Procreate, since it is the coolest thing we have to Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. Again, this app isn't free and costs $9.99. For such a powerful app, that's a steal. The app is extremely similar to Mac apps in terms of functionality. You can work with layers, cut things out, powerful, versatile, but much more user-friendly. No wonder so many designers use it. But here's the catch. On an iPad, you can use the Apple Pencil for that. Drawing and editing photos with the Apple Pencil is a completely another level. You can instantly feel more creative. Imagine yourself as, as some kind of a Picasso. Pencil on iPad opens so many new possibilities you couldn't have gotten on Mac by default. It's super responsive, can recognize tilting, pressure, etc. And it really makes thumbnail creation or photo editing 10 out of 10. Definitely the best way to create thumbnails. Editing photos also falls in the same category. Lightroom on iPad is probably the best app for photo editing. It's fast, optimized, and has a lot of features. Yes, it's still limited, but if you know what you're doing and have custom presets, the iPad will become your best friend during photo shoots. Took a few shots, transferred to the iPad and edited on the go. Plus with the screen that's better than on a MacBook Air, for example, all images will look ultra realistic, colorful, and in every way perfect. I, of course, still wanna see full-fledged Lightroom and Photoshop on an iPad. So for now, I will give it a seven out of 10 for photo editing. Okay, it seems like the iPad itself can do all the things I need, but can it work with Windows? Yes, it can. In iPadOS 16, Apple has added Stage Manager, which kind of turns your iPad into a Mac. Let me explain. The iPad keyboard monitor combo really feels like you're just using a conventional laptop. You have windows, you can resize them and move them around, and they overlay one another, but there's always a but. It doesn't quite work like you're used to. Stage Manager is a really cool feature, but it requires some getting used to. Plus, it makes everything cramped. I'm using the 12.9 inch iPad and it already feels kind of crowded with only a couple of apps opened. I can surely switch off the recent apps and the dock and get a bit more space. Generally, to a Mac user, this stage manager may seem confusing at first. Apps overlay differently, the system moves them around automatically, transfers to recents. If you really want to use your iPad as a Mac, you can. With an external display, you will get roughly the same experience. So seven out of 10 window management. What else can the iPad do? Well, its back cameras and LiDAR sensor can be used to scan objects. Those 3D models can later be edited in Blender, for example. I see architects benefiting from that the most. Scanning columns, arches, and other elements is something you can really take the advantage of. For me, not a very useful feature, but I recognize the potential when I see it. So eight out of 10 for 3D scanning. Now you may ask, is there anything the iPad can do? And yes, there is. An iPad will be virtually useless if you are a programmer. The only coding app is Swift Playground, but it's meant for kids and doesn't allow for complex workflows. No C Sharp, Java, Python, nothing. If you are a programmer, the best way to use the iPad will be as a second screen. But why do that when you can have a much bigger screen? So one out of 10 for coders. And what if you wanna use Figma? Figma on iPad doesn't exist, and the web version is so janky and limited that you will wish to never open it again. Even though the iPad seems like a great device for designers, it's still limited in some areas. So am I pro enough for the iPad Pro? Apparently, yes. Can it replace your MacBook? In a way. The iPad is just a great deal. For the price of a laptop, you're getting multiple devices at one. You are getting a laptop, an extremely capable drawing board, an external display for your camera, and a full tablet. A tablet that gives you stuff you don't have on Macs, such as Face ID, or comfortably watching videos in bed, or reading books, or high-quality cameras. If your workflow is relatively simple, you edit videos without too many effects, you don't work with huge Excel documents, then the iPad can replace your MacBook. I would even say that the iPad and a keyboard would be a perfect device for a budding YouTuber. You don't even need a camera, you can shoot videos with an iPad, edit them, create thumbnails, 
emails and upload all from one device. I can even say that from many perspectives, iPad is even better than a Mac. I'm sure if you spend time and optimize your work, you will be able to really make an iPad the MacBook replacement. And what do you think? Could you replace your Mac with an iPad? Type your thoughts in the comments below and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and see you in the next one.